going to go through all the enhancements in version 1.7110 for the UI24. And we'll start from top, the shuffle feature that's been added. You've got to make sure that you're in auto mode, then click the shuffle button. It'll play all the files and shuffle between them in the actual directory you're in. So if I click all, it'll shuffle all. If I go to a specific directory, it'll go to a specific directory and shuffle within that. Just uh, make sure that all your characters are English. Um, some characters are not recognized from other languages. Just check that and make sure that it can play back before you use it in your gig. Second one on the list is the link Ogs Master to Master Fader. So if I go to my Og Sense and I go to my Master Og Send here and I want to link these two together, for example, I'm running subwoofer output or delayed speakers, and when I'm moving my master, I want the outputs as well to follow from the Ogs or the matrix output. So we link that to master, and you'll see a little link chain here come up. And now I can just link as I'm speaking, link that to any of the sends or several of the sends and obviously to unlink you click here and that'll unlink it the third function is the subgroup exclude from masters if i go to my subgroups here and we are able to for example it's very useful if you want to send a subgroup just to a delay stack or to an effects output um, or to be processed externally and return to a channel but not to the master output directly so i can click on subgroup exclude from master a little green uh, red speaker with a minus on it comes on here and now that subgroup will not go to the master output but all the channels will still be working and you'll see metering on them so you can use that for example to send your effects channels to effects but not to master output or as i said to process externally uh, via matrix and not to process them on the master output to switch it back to master send to master and that's all done Number four is the global tap. So as you know, we can have several delays at the same time. So if I edit a channel and go to my effect sends, I can have you know two delays here, for example, and each one of them, you can turn on the global tap. So that will tap on the actual front page GUI with your tap tempo, and that can select which one of those delays you're tapping or both. The other thing here to remember, the drop down here is your divisions. So if you want faster delays, you can divide that down because on the time delay we are down to roughly 100 milliseconds if you want to make that faster have it was basically you know, 50 will be 50 milliseconds um, and the tier the values here are showing your tap values both in bpm and in milliseconds that's the tap values here we'll go to the um, fifth function the master isolate functionality fix uh, in the shows menu we, we have isolates which means to isolate any function when you load a show to keep them on the system my masters last version weren't working properly that's all fixed as far as that's concerned so your master isolates are all working properly now uh, number six is the vca group now allow inclusion of ogs as a matrix and that's great because previously on the vcas i couldn't um, add things like um voxes and uh, matrix but now if i select that can obviously a few ways to program them but if i go to my vcas here i have my oxes or oh, when they become matrix and matrix uh, my oxes are here as well which is fantastic as you can control some sends as well with the vcas it's a very good function to have Next one down the line is the pre-post processing option added for matrix contribution. So if I go to one of my sends here, okay, my aux sends here, and I will go to aux4, for example, and convert that to a matrix, switch to matrix, I can have now pre or post processing, as you can see here on all the auxes. And what that means is that you can have the ability to have pre or post EQ being sent to the matrix and then you can EQ them separately here again we go into number seven the pre post processing no that was number seven what am I talking about number eight time set from client ah, that's fantastic uh, if you have an HDMI screen okay if you click on the settings page and you go to your normal settings you will have another function here which is called time and date where you can set up your time and date Otherwise, the system, the UI24, will get the time and date from any connected browser 
the first time it sees a browser, it'll grab the time of date on that. So if you change the time of date on a PC, on a Mac, or on an iPad, or on a Samsung Galaxy, or any device that's connected to the UI24, when it sees it, it'll grab the time and date of that, which makes it much easier to set the right time and date on the, on the player uh, when you're recording. As you remember, a few people wanted that specifically done. Okay, we go to the next part, number nine, coloring of channels. Very nice little feature. So if I'm on my main channel here, we have a ability to color them. Hold down, say color, and you can select coloring from here. So if I wanted channel two green, and color channel three green, and color channel four red. It's just easier to see uh, for some users what they are. For example, you could put all the vocals as green, so you don't even have to read what it is. You know straight away, and you can run to it, and you can see that those are green. It's quite quite easy to see exactly what was going on in your system as far as that's concerned. Number 10, HDMI screen support. So uh, as you can see in the list, in the PDF list that's been put up there, there's extra screens that are supported, and that's important. Uh, the RTA hold function, which I discussed in the other um, in the other video as well. So if I click on 17 and my EQ here, and I click on RTA, and I click on RTA hold, that'll hold the RTA. So any changes I am making, as you can hear, probably is uh, you'll see them change in the RTA and you compare them uh, as well. It's used for tuning uh, rooms, but you'll see that in the other video that's already been put up. Um, number 14, EQ view and channel strip. That's beautiful. So right now on the current system, it's just showing you the DB here or showing you pan. So you can go to your local settings, okay? And you can select for EQ curve on channel LED click that on and now when I go here it'll show me a guide of what the graphic that I'm on so if I go to channel 18 which I don't have any graphic on at the moment and I hit edit and I do something crazy like this okay nice smiley as you can see that'll show me an EQ curve on the GUI itself which then obviously makes it easier for you to see what you've done before uh, number 15 Ogsend view follows view groups so now, if you have my view group set up, which is this one, if I, and I only have channel 1, 4, 13, 14, and 11, if I click my OG send, that's supposed to follow it, but it ain't. Okay. So I'm wondering why, because that's a matrix. Remember that, that's a matrix. So if I hit on channel 3, that followed me. Beautiful. There you go. Even I make mistakes sometimes and confuse myself. So, view groups, 1, 4, 13, 14, 11. Click edit. Click OGS, 1, 4, 11, 13, 11. Beautiful, 1, 4, 11, 13, 14, and effects delay. That's what it does. If I get out of view groups, I'll see everything again, as usual. So, remember that. A few users requested that function. It's a nice little thing to have for quickly... Um, Doing view groups, I think that's about it. Um, just remember with the HDMI, we have the overscan and underscan there. So if I go to my um, setting page here and in the HDMI screen section for uh, overscan, I think that's in global. So HDMI underscan. Now you may boot up your system and you'll see that the monitor will only show you a GUI, uh, a logo, sorry, the UI logo only that and it won't go into a full GUI that's probably because the underscan is on you may need to disconnect your monitor log in via LAN or Wi-Fi switch it off and then you'll be able to use your monitor then once you reboot again thank you